A 75-year-old woman presents to surgery complaining of blurry vision of her right eye for the past few months. She also notes that straight lines appear crooked or wavy. This only seems to affect the center of her right visual field and no problems are noted with the left eye. She has never worn glasses or contact lens. On examination, a central scotoma is noted in the right eye, which is the single most likely diagnosis. So let's look at the options. Primary open angle glaucoma. Can it cause a central scotoma? What causes a central scotoma anyway? Is it damage to the fovea? And damage to the optic disc. Can primary open angle glaucoma cause damage to the fovea? think so. Past few months, so this is not very acute. It can be primary open angle glaucoma, I think. It's of the age, uh, and then there's blurry vision. I'm not sure if it typically affects the, the center of the vision. Let's look at other options. Cerebral vascular disease. Sounds too chronic. I mean, the onset is too slow to be a cerebral vascular disease. When talking about cerebral vascular disease, usually you're talking about stroke. Age-related macular degeneration. Macula. Fovea. Where's the macula? Central retinal artery occlusion. It would be very acute in that case. It would be total blindness instead of a scotoma. Anterior uveitis, definitely not. You have red eye, painful. None, none of that sort happening here. So it's either primary or open angle glaucoma or age related macular degeneration. Because of the age, I'm tempted to put age related macular degeneration. Scotoma in the right eye. However, it's only in unilateral, so I'm tempted to put primary open angle glaucoma instead of age related. It's typically, age related macular degeneration would be symmetrical on both sides. I'm not sure. Let's try. No, the answer is age related macular degeneration. Okay, common eye disorders affecting vision. Macular degeneration is associated with central field loss. Primary open ankle glaucoma is associated with peripheral field loss. Okay. 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 Reasoning? Is there any reasoning? What's the pathophys? Open ankle glaucoma is a pressure, right? Too much pressure in the eye. Each related make it oh let's look at discussion if anybody is smart enough to tell me what phrasing the question was a bit intense. Uh the caps lock scared me a bit just to remind you that single and all alone. Single. It, isn't it very unlikely to be unilateral? AMD often presents unilaterally initially, but yes, you're right, it eventually becomes bilateral. No, commonly it can be unilateral. <laughs> okay, could this be retinal detachment as well? Retinal detachment is present more suddenly. Yeah. Okay, so comment section is not very helpful. Age related macular degeneration. Age related macular degeneration is the most common cause of blindness in the UK. Degeneration of central retina, macula, is the key feature. Okay, where's the fovea and where's the macula? Fovea is the center, right? Where is the macula? Where is the macula? Macula is the structure where the fovea lies.
So it's talking about the same thing, isn't it? You know, the macula and the center of the macula is the fovea. Yeah, so macula is this area and fovea is this area. So we're talking about the same thing. Mm. Well, to remember, I'm not sure whether this is the correct pathophysiology or not. To remember, open angle glaucoma or any glaucoma. Close angle will be acute, but open angle glaucoma will cause peripheral vision loss, so you have tunnel vision. So imagine the pressure pressing against the retina, right? It affects the peripheral vessels first, so it affects here first. Whereas age-related macular degeneration is straight away here, so it gives you a central scotoma first. Okay? For the sake of remembering, I'm not sure if that's the correct. Pathophys. Okay, age-related macular degeneration is the most common cause of blindness in the UK. Degeneration of the central retina macula is the key feature with changes usually bilateral. Age-related macular degeneration is characterized by degeneration of retinal photoreceptors that results in the formation of drusen, which can be seen on fundoscopy and retinal photography. Let's look at drusen. So it looks like bubbles. Uh, traditionally, two forms of macular degeneration are seen, dry or wet. Dry is 90% of cases, geographic atrophy, macular degeneration characterized by drusen, yellow round spots in birch membrane. Wet, 10% of cases, exudative neovascular macular degeneration characterized by corridor neovascularization, leakage of serous fluids, and blood can subsequently result in rapid loss of vision and carries worse prognosis. Recently, there have been a move to a more updated classification, early age related macular degeneration and late age with the macular degeneration which is the same, the early one is the drusen and the late one is the neovascularization and sedative one Age related macular degeneration ARMD is the most common cause is the commonest cause of visual loss in elderly persons in the world. It affects thirty to fifty million people worldwide. Epidemiology population estimates suggest a male to female ratio of one to two, so more common in females. The average age of presentation is greater than seventy years of age. Risk factors advancing age itself is the greatest risk factor for age related macular degeneration. The risk of age related macular degeneration increases threefold for patients age older than seventy five years versus those age 65 to 74. Smoking is another risk factor for the development of AMR, ARMD. Current smokers are twice as likely as non-smokers to have ARMD related visual loss and ex-smokers have a slightly increased risk of developing the condition. Family history is also a strong risk factor for developing ARMD. First degree relatives of a sufferer of ARMD are thought to be four times more likely to inherit the condition. Other risk factors for developing the condition include those associated with increased risk of ischemic cardiovascular disease such as hypertension, dyslipidemia, and diabetes mellitus. Patients typically present with a subacute onset of visual loss, with a reduction in visual acuity, particularly of near field objects, difficulties in dark adaptation with an overall deterioration in vision and night, fluctuations in visual disturbance which may vary significantly from day to day. They may also suffer from photopsia, a perception of flickering or flashing lights and glare around objects. Signs, distortion of the line perception may be noted as Emsler grade testing. Fundoscopy reveals a presence Okay, oh, I was reading without going into my head. Okay. Other risk factors for the blink condition includes so there is ischemic cardiovascular. Other risk factors for the blink the condition include those associated with increased risk of ischemic cardiovascular disease such as hypertension, dyslipidemia, and diabetes mellitus. Okay. Patients typically present with a subacute onset of visual loss with a reduction in visual acuity, particularly of near field objects, difficulty in dark adaptation with an overall deterioration of vision at night, fluctuations in visual disturbances which may vary significantly from day to day. They may also suffer from photopsia. Photopsia. Perception of flickering of flashing lights and glare around objects. 
Science distortion of the line perception may be noted on Emsler grid testing. Fundoscopy reveals the presence of drusen, yellow areas of pigmented deposition in the macular area, which may become confluent in the late disease to form a macular scar. In wet ARMD, well demarcated red patches may be seen where which represent intraretinal or subretinal fluid leakage or hemorrhage. Investigation slip lamp microscopy is the initial investigation of choice. I've always wondered how slip lamp microscopy looks like. Sure, well, what do you see? You just see the fundus like normal? And just you see the anterior chamber of the eye. Hmm? see like a friendoscope yeah okay so you, you get to see the fundus of the eye and you get to see the interior chamber as well I guess Slit lamp microscopy is the initial investigation of choice to identify any pigmentary exudative or hemorrhagic changes affecting the retina, which may identify the presence of ARMD. This is usually accompanied by color fundus photography to provide a baseline against which changes can be identified over time. Fluorescent angiography is utilized in if neurovascular ARMD is suspected, as this can guide intervention with anti-VEGF therapy. This may be complemented with endocyanine green angiography to visualize any changes in the choroidal circulation. Ocular coherence tomography is used to visualize the retina in three dimensions because it can reveal areas of disease which aren't visible using microscopy alone. Treatment The ARDS trial examined the treatment of dry ARMD in 3,640 subjects. It showed that a combination of zinc with antioxidant vitamins A, C, and E reduced progression of the disease by around one third. Patients with more extensive juicen seem to benefit most from the intervention. Treatment is therefore recommended in patients with at least moderate category dry ARMD. Vascular endothelial growth factor is a potent mitogen and dries increased vascular permeability in patients with wet ARMD. A number of trials have been shown that use of anti-VEGF agents can limit progression of weight wet ARMD and stabilize or reverse visual loss. Evidence suggests that they should be instituted with the first two months within the first two months of diagnosis of wet ARMD if possible. Examples of anti agents include Reni B Zumab, Beva C Zumab, and Pegaptenib. The agents are usually administered by four weekly injection. Laser photocoagulation does thus slow progression of ARMD where there is new vessel formation, although there is risk of acute visual loss after treatment, which may be increased in patients with subfoveal ARMD. For this reason, anti vegas therapies are usually preferred. Hmm. Very informative, this thing. So, macular degeneration, central visual loss, open ankle crocoma, peripheral loss. Usually it's bilateral. Ninety percent is dry, ten percent is wet. They have different treatment. You can see whether it's dry or wet depend using a slit slip lamp or endoscope. You see drusen in the dry one. Wet one you see increased vascularization and 
maybe some hemorrhage mm, dry one you can give vitamins ACE what other vitamins vitamins ACE antioxidant zinc zinc with vitamins ACE and in wet ones you can give uh, VEGF, anti-VEGF cool 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 